Hey there, fellas. Do you remember that video we did with the spring-loaded engine? Now, we all know full well that there is no way to break the laws of physics and to make a perpetual motion engine. But the springy engine itself was a pretty nifty thing. And so we've decided to apply that principle in converting a conventional motor. You will see that we've got this engine on a stand. To it we've welded a little frame with some springs. But they're not just there for looks. They're actually connected to the lower caps on the conrods. Now allow me to go into why we've done this. So the physics are about the same as when we ran that huge flywheel. The engine is in a position where two springs are under tension and the other two are not. And with that in mind, I'm going to try something. I'm pushing down on the piston. Excellent, and that's without any gasoline. It's just the engine block. And the crank made almost two full rotations. That is a very good thing. And that tells us that this sort of system has some free energy to give. And given that there is some disposable energy, the system has massive potential. The theory behind all of this is pretty interesting. During the intake stroke, we have the piston in TDC. And the spring is stretched out as the piston is making its way down. At this time, the spring is transferring its energy to the piston and facilitating its descent. Actually accelerating it. And so during the intake stroke, the vacuum is going to develop more rapidly, filling the cylinder with more mixture that is then going to be burned. And that's already a great benefit. Then during the combustion stroke, the same thing happens. Piston is up here, spring is stretched out all the way. It's got a lot of energy to give, which it does on the way down. On top of that, the mixture is ignited, the mixture goes bang. You've got the explosion, pushing the piston down, with the spring also pulling down on it, providing a bit of additional horsepower. But then we also have the compression and exhaust strokes. And after the spring has compressed and exerted all of its potential energy, there is a bit of time left while it's not under tension to slightly stretch it out. Oh, we're also forgetting a key component, which is the flywheel. And it is actually going to be helping us out a lot at this phase. It's not going to waste the same amount of energy required to stretch out the spring. But while the latter stretches out and accumulates some energy, it'll then give that energy back to the piston. But this is all just theory, so I suggest we take a car, go out for a drive, and measure the acceleration on the stock motor to 100 kilometers an hour. Then we head back to base, do this spring mod, and do another round of testing. Let's go! As per a good tradition we have, let's measure the acceleration time from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. Let's see how this car do. Here we go. Come on now. You can do it. Come on! Excellent, we have a time. Okay, so the time needed to get up to 100 was 25.64 seconds. We need to find a way to secure the springs to the rods and the oil pan. We have figured out the conrod side of things, welded on some nuts to the caps, and we'll connect the springs to those. As for the oil pan, that one's a bit tricky. We'll most likely fabricate some sort of squared pan. And inside we'll have a metal bar for connecting the springs. Yeah. 
Okay, so we've made the sort of frame for the pan, and we're going to fit transparent bits of plexiglass to the front, the back, and the bottom of the pan. We'll keep one of the sides uncovered for now, and after we connect the springs, we'll fit another piece of plexiglass. The oil pan, yeah guys, this is looking pretty good. All four of them springs are where they need to be, hooked up to the pan, and now you'll see that two of the springs are stretched out, the other two are not. This is the position the rotating assembly assumed when it stopped. We do have a good view of what's going on inside, so I suggest we pour in some oil, start the engine, and see how this system is going to work. Yeah, oil in, fire it up, test the theory on the oil foaming, and just see how the engine do. Let's get to it. Fire it up and let's have a look. There you go. Exactly what I was worried about. The springs are generating a lot of foam. That is definitely not ideal. But it isn't the end of the world, either. The springs make for a sort of effect as if we'd installed a balance shaft, which is something this engine never came with. This is looking really good. Now, the main reason why a bunch of folks are apprehensive when it comes to balance shafts is that they're heavy, and they rob the engine of a bit of power. But our case is quite the contrary. Now it's time to test this mod out on the road. Right, guys, we're at that same stretch of road as before to conduct some testing after the engine has been modified. The mod itself is very simple. All we did was fit some springs. Yesterday it was wet, but today we have snow. It is melting, but hey, this is the surface we're going to have to measure the 0 to 100 acceleration on, with slightly compromised grip. But if the car were to accelerate faster on this surface, that would mean this is a win, that we've made some solid modifications to the engine. Okay, let's get onto the starting line, and from there it's hammer down. Let's go! Let's give this a try. Here goes nothing. Look at it go! That's 90... 100. Terrific. Oh, really? Holy cow! That is actually one hell of a result. This is truly a tremendous success. I mean, just look and see for yourselves. 0 to 10 kilometers an hour, uh, 0.68 seconds. 0 to 60 is 6.41. 0 to 100, 15.5 seconds. Holy cow! Yeah, the results are truly impressive. Compared to the first round of testing where my best time was a 25.64. One might speculate that I wasn't going wide open throttle, but in reality I was. Each and every time I was foot to the floor for maximum performance. Such a simple mod, yet such impressive gains. It's tough to say whether this boosted torque or horsepower, but I'd say this was good for both, actually. Increases across the board, improved performance. Yeah, guys, such a simple mod, yet such a significant increase in power. And also, that's a mind-blowing decrease of the 0 to 100 time. That's it for this video. We'll catch you guys later. But if we were to be honest... This entire setup with the springs, as we're all well aware, it's not going to fly. I've said it before, there's no cheating the laws of physics. 
And that stands true in this case as well. The laws of physics stipulate that energy can't come from out of nowhere, and it's not going to disappear into thin air. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Stretching it out equals it bouncing back. And so there wasn't any free energy for them to give. Okay, well, uh, pay attention in physics class, and uh, catch you guys later. <laughs>